winning daily podcast. We're here for March 2nd, March 3rd. A lot of stuff to go over. We're going to bring in our man, Dynamite David, early. We got a lot of okay, college so basketball let's get tournament. To the games today, Dynamite. Uh, you have a much bigger slate than I do. I was a little light. I couldn't find much, and I didn't know quite how to read a lot of these makeup games. I, I don't know how serious teams are going to take them or how – I, I guess teams that need to get wins probably will take them a little more seriously than the ones that don't. Yeah, there's there's actually some really good games tonight. I was pretty surprised. Uh, I'm going to start with the the probably the biggest game of the night, the Big Ten matchup between Michigan and Illinois. Uh, now, it's been – I guess it's kind of dropped the last few hours that it looks like uh, Dosimu is going to play. He's being fitted for a mask. Uh, don't know how that's going to affect his game. and He's still questionable, uh, but – since that it was announced, it's moved two points. And I'm going to take Michigan, minus six and a half. Uh, this Michigan team wins at home by an average of 17 and a half points per game. Uh, Illinois, you know, they, they've they looked solid, just got a good win without their best player uh, against Wisconsin. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be 100% tonight, and they're just going into who I think is the, the best team in college basketball right now, uh, other than Gonzaga, but – they haven't really played anybody, so the but this Michigan team's really been looking good, and I think they win by double digits. So I like that six and a half here. You know, for somebody who teases me when I wear my Michigan shirt, you've you've been riding Michigan a lot this season. I've been riding the Big Ten a lot this year. <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting on that stat on when how many of uh, what percentage of my picks this year have been in the Big Ten. But I've really liked the Big Ten basketball action. Yes, definitely. You considering. Have. Two of my next four are also in the Big Ten. <laughs> but next up, we're going to go to a team that I think has a lot to play for in this game, and that's going to be the reason they're going to win big. Uh, they just got a good win against Creighton, but I like Xavier minus one and a half at Georgetown tonight. I think they're the better team, and they're sitting right on the bubble. I think that Creighton win might put them in, but they're going to need every W they can get. So I think they're going to come out and dominate Georgetown tonight. Yeah, Uh I, I was very close, like this close to putting Xavier down. And uh, I just talked myself out of it. I was like, yeah, this will be where they, some weird Georgetown uh, spunky game that I'm going to be mad at. But uh, maybe as time grows, I might go back and uh, hop on that one because I was very, very close to taking Xavier. Uh, it, it's around that time when they like to make their little late season push and uh, scare everybody in the uh, – conference tournament and the NCAA tournament yeah they're they're playing well well right now and like I said they've got everything to play for and I think that motivation is gonna is really gonna uh this is probably one of my my locks tonight I, I really like this one yeah uh next up and the back to the big 10 in Michigan State versus Indiana I'm gonna go with the Spartans here minus two and a half um these two teams uh, are kind of trending in different directions right now. Michigan State's won three of their last four, including wins against Illinois, Ohio State, and this Indiana team. Um, Indiana, they've lost four out of their last five. So I think this, uh, the fact that it's uh, at Michigan State and it being a small point spread at just two and a half, I'm going to go with the Spartans. Mm, hopping on the Sparty bandwagon. It, it took you a couple wins, but uh, now you're on the train. Uh, and, and it's almost not so much the Spartans here is as bad as Indiana. Well, been I was playing. going to say, uh, I think you hopped off the Hoosier bandwagon about six weeks ago because I, I think you've taken against them every week. Yeah, they 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 started off the year really strong and they've just been really falling back. Uh, I don't even think they're middle of the pack in the Big Ten anymore. No, they're I, the bottom of the pack. They're really poor right now. Uh, after Michigan State beat them, uh, I guess. A week and a half ago, yes, uh, Michigan State jumped them and has been trending the other direction while Indiana is trending down. So we're going to stay in the Big Ten for another another pick. I like this is another one of my locks today. I love Purdue minus two and a half at home versus Wisconsin tonight. I just simply for the fact that I really like Purdue at home. I think they've only got one conference loss at home this season, and this Wisconsin team really struggles to score the basketball. Really good defensively, but they uh, they can't find an answer offensively. So I'm going to go with Purdue here, minus two and a half. Mm. Last up, I like Georgia Tech, minus one and a half versus Duke. Uh, this Georgia Tech team's won four straight, including a win against Fort Virginia Tech, which I believe I picked correctly over you picking Virginia Tech that in that correct. one. That is correct. But I've been on the Georgia Tech train ever since then. And technically speaking, I was on the Georgia Tech train on that one. Uh, I just listened to math, and uh, math let me down in that game. 
Uh, the other thing I look at here is uh, Duke is really susceptible to teams uh, that shoot the ball well. They're giving up a uh, poor field goal percentage, allowing 46% per game. And Georgia Tech shoots the ball well. They're shooting 47.3%. So I think this play, this matchup plays into their favor, and it's at Georgia Tech. So I think they're going to go into this offseason strong. Yeah. Um, that would be my college basketball game of the day. Uh, back-to-back days, only one game for me. Uh, I, I think we'll warm back up as these uh, tournaments start to heat back up. But uh, like I said, I didn't really know how to play some of these makeup games and how everybody's motivated. Uh, I did like that Xavier one, but uh, just couldn't make myself quite grab it. But I'm riding Georgia Tech, too. They've been hot, uh, possibly the best team in the ACC the last uh, two and a half, three weeks. So, uh So I'm going to ride Georgia Tech. I think they'll uh, beat up on Duke. So I got Georgia Tech as well tonight, minus the one and a half. Where can we find you, Dynamite? You can follow me on Twitter at GLN Dynamite underscore D. All right. We did a little reverse course, started out with college basketball to get through those conference tournaments with our man, Dynamite David. And he was certainly Dynamite today. Let's see if his picks are just as hot. All right. Let's go to the ATP Rotterdam ABN AMRO World Tennis Tournament. We got two picks tonight. Uh, slash in the morning, uh, Lorenzo Sango minus two and a half plus 100 versus the American Tommy Paul. Really like that pick. I uh, think Lorenzo will put it on Tommy tonight and uh, cruise into the next round. And then we have Jay Loren Staroff plus two and a half minus 120 versus David Goffin. Uh, just didn't like the way Goffin played in his last tournament. Think Jan Loren uh, probably. I have the chance overall here for an upset for sure. Uh, like those two and a half games, think this will be a tight, tight match. Uh, definitely go three sets. So John Lorenz Staroff, plus two and a half, minus 120. All right, let's get into some soccer. We're going to start out with the EPL. Uh, Aston Villa plus 100 versus Sheffield United. Sheffield United just in, uh, they're in no hope territory. Um I just don't think they'll have a chance. Uh, Aston Villa still sort of playing to try to get into one of those Europa League spots. Uh, So uh, this would mean a lot uh, for a win, and uh, I think they'll get it pretty easy here. Uh, Sheffield just going to probably be a doormat uh, most of the year long as the inevitability of regulation uh, sets in. So Aston Villa plus 100. Let's go over to Syria. Uh, Roma minus 105 versus Florentina. Roma tends to has dominated in Syria versus the uh, lower level teams uh florentina is not necessarily low low level but they are not a very good team they do have a handful of ho- solid players but they struggle to score so roma should be able to light them up really like roma versus the uh, non uh top probably six seven teams in syria they should dominate roma minus 105 and we're gonna go to the other in Syria, you had a DZ, plus 650 to win both teams to score versus ac milan uh I don't think AC Milan's out of the woods uh, yet. We took them over the weekend versus Roma. Uh, We thought they were due for a win there, and uh, Roma struggled versus those top six, seven teams like we had mentioned. Uh, But I think there's a chance for an upset here. Uh, Zoltan's out. Uh, Just think their struggles will continue. They've been bad for about a month, month and a half now. Uh, Yundizzi's not a great team, but they can be spunky versus some of these top teams. So, uh... I just, that 650, I couldn't pass up. So UDZ plus 650 to win both teams to score uh, in uh, Serie A tomorrow. And uh, the Copa del Rey. Uh, We're going to take Barcelona to advance, uh, plus 220 versus Sevilla here. Really thought they found something over the weekend versus Sevilla. I thought Sevilla would be able to stand up to them like they did in the Copa del Rey first leg. We're into the second leg here, and Barcelona just thrashed them in La Liga over the weekend. I look for them to put it on here. Uh, Barcelona doesn't have much hope in La Liga. They don't have really any hope in the Champions League, so this might be the only trophy they could grab. So uh, look for Barcelona to come out and uh, really try to put an effort in here to advance uh, versus Sevilla. Uh, so Barcelona plus 222 advance versus Sevilla. All right, let's move on to the NBA. We got three picks in the NBA tonight. We're going to start out with the Miami Heat versus the Atlanta Hawks. Really don't understand why the Hawks fired their coach. They were tanking for two seasons. Uh, half their players that they brought in were hurt. They're probably second best to player. Uh, really, uh, the guy who'd been their best player all year long, uh, DeAndre Hunter, was out. And they fire Lloyd Pierce. Uh, maybe they get a little... 
new coach bump, but uh, the way the Heat are playing right now, they're in rhythm. I look for them to dominate this uh, very poor defensive team in the Hawks. Miami Heat minus three and a half. We're going to go with the Clippers minus three and a half versus the Boston Celtics. Uh, and lastly, we're going to go with the Phoenix Suns plus one versus the Los Angeles Lakers. So some really good action tonight in the NBA. That's probably where I'll be uh, because uh, – we talked about it in the opening segment. Just didn't like a lot of college basketball today. So NBA is probably be where I'm living tonight. Uh, that's our show. You can find me, GLN Champ, at uh, Twitter and Instagram. Follow us on GreenlightNetwork.org, GreenlightNetwork, Facebook, and YouTube. That's our show, and we're out.